border. Okay, got that over here. So everybody can see. Okay, so today we're going to begin talking about making a presentation. And so for making a presentation, one of the first things we need to look at is to get ready for your presentation. How do you begin to get ready before you present? And this is a key point. You need to spend time to prepare. The more you prepare, the better your presentation. The less you prepare, the worse your presentation. So sometimes you see someone present, you say, wow, they present so well. But usually they do a lot of practice. Even someone very famous like Steve Jobs' presentation, he spent many, many days preparing and practicing his presentations. No one is a very good presenter just off the top of their head. It doesn't work that good. So let's talk a minute about uh, how to prepare for a presentation. Okay, the first thing we do to prepare for a presentation is we need to get our objectives ready. Okay? That is, what is it that we're, we're going to do, right? Choose an interesting topic. Right? If your topic is boring, your presentation is going to be kind of uh, boring. No matter what you do, it's hard to make a really boring topic an interesting presentation. So choose an interesting topic. Or maybe your topic is not so interesting, but you can do something or choose some part of it to make it more interesting. So this is something you need to prepare beforehand. Now sometimes when we go to make a presentation, like to a conference for a research presentation, you can meet people before you start your presentation. This is actually a way to help your presentation because if you talk to people beforehand, you say, hi, hello, I'm from Taiwan. Uh, this makes them listen more when you present. If they don't know you, it's easy for them to just fall asleep or ignore you or just leave. But if they know you, they'll pay more attention. So you can get more people's attention by talking to them before the presentation. Another key point is to know your audience. To know your audience. That is, who are you presenting to? If you're presenting to people who don't know anything about research and you talk about things like your chi-square test or your probability, they don't know what you're talking about. But if they understand those things and you don't mention them, then they'll think, what are you talking about? So you need to know who is your audience, who is your target. This is just like a research paper. You need to write your research paper thinking who will read it, and then you have to give them what they expect, right? So let's talk a little bit about choosing a topic. What are some of the things we can do to help choose a topic? Well, every good presentation is based on an interesting topic, but that's easy to say, but hard to do. Usually when we give a presentation, we are not free to choose our topic. Usually that someone gives us the topic, like your professor gives you a research topic, or maybe you're in a research group, they give you a topic, or maybe you're a student, the teacher gives you a topic, or you work inside a company and your boss gives you a topic. You are not free to choose your topic. So choose a good topic is not easy because we're not free to choose our topic. So what can we do? Well, a key point is you need to get excited about your topic. You need to get really excited about your topic. Now, how do you get excited about your topic? You need to think positive. <laughs> okay? You need to be positive. You need to think, what is really good about this topic? What is really exciting about this topic? What is something that can make people feel good about this topic? Even if the topic is very boring and you're not interested, you have to find something that makes it exciting. right? So when you watch people who give a good presentation, sometimes you listen and it's so exciting and so interesting, but actually the topic is nothing. It's nothing special, very silly, or very boring. But because they feel excited, you feel excited, right? 
key point. So when you give a presentation, the audience is full of people. People are, are human beings, right? Human beings are a lot like monkeys. Right? <laughs> monkeys have very social behavior, very social. So if you get excited, they'll feel excited. If you feel boring, they'll feel boring, right? If you feel happy, they'll be happy. If you feel, oh, this is so much trouble, I don't want to do this, then they will feel that too. So a key point is to get excited about your topic, to get happy, get motivated about your topic, which is not easy to do. If you're not excited, no one else will be excited. If you're not interested, no one else will be interested. Let's talk a little bit about meeting people. What do we do about meeting people? Well, before you start the presentation, you can go out and uh, meet people. Usually there's a time before your presentation. Sometimes there's a time before the uh, day before you can meet people. And you can even ask people to come to your presentation. You say, oh, I'm presenting tomorrow. Can you come? <laughs> Would you like to come listen to me? And when those people come, they'll pay attention. And when, if they pay attention, the other people will pay attention, you see? So it's good to try to meet people beforehand and help them to help you. It's kind of like a mutual benefit. Exchange name cards and shake hands, right? Do you all have name cards for being MBA students? Don't you have MBA, NCHU, marketing name cards? No. No? Okay, that's very sad. <laughs> I think the technology department has name cards, right? Yeah? What's wrong with you guys? Oh, look at that. Oh, my God. Let me see. Let me see. I take mine next week. You have, you, you have one? Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Next week. Next week. Okay. Yes, Amber will help next week. She will help us I like that. I like it. Very nice. So, so do you all have, you all do have name cards for the MBA, right? Yeah. No. No. Mm. Agriculture is poor. Marketing <laughs> 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 is poor. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We pay for it. We you did it, it yourself, right? Yeah. Yeah. Why? Why? What's wrong with you guys? What's wrong with you? I don't know. If you're the class leader, you should be a leader. <laughs> <laughs> it's very important to have a name card, right? Yeah. Now, not everyone always has a name card. I found this to be very normal. If you go visiting another country, it's actually very normal that Americans or British do not carry name cards. Some do, lots don't. But that's okay, that doesn't matter. We should, because it makes it easy for people to remember who you are. And of course, if you go to Japan, China, Hong Kong, Singapore, Taiwan, everyone always uses their name cards. So it's very important to, to do that. So shake hands or uh, exchange name cards and or exchange name cards. Very, very key point, right? Introduce yourself and where you're from, right? And ask the other person who they are and where they're from, right? So this is a very key kind of thing. It's called breaking the ice, right? Breaking the ice. Use this time to introduce your topic. The topic meaning your presentation topic. And that way people say, oh yeah, I'm interested in that. I want to come listen, right? This also helps them to feel comfortable about your topic. Here are some example sentences we can try. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Jack Chen. I'm the sales director of Avon's Taiwan division. So, greeting, name, and title. Greeting, name, and title. Right? Greeting, name, and title. So, can we all try? <laughs> right? Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I know it's silly, but the more you try, the better. You can't hurt to try, right? Right? Very practical. Try, right? Good afternoon. Hi, how are you? Good afternoon. Very good. And you? <laughs> What's your name? My name is Clyde Warden. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Clyde Warden. Oh, I'm very to meet you. Today I'm going to be presenting about presentations. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Would 
Would you like to come listen to my presentation? Okay, I will be there. Okay, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know it seems silly, but let's try. Everybody try. Everybody try. Go ahead and try. Now, I know it seems silly. Now, wait, 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 wait. I just want to emphasize something. In my class, I don't worry about feeling silly. Because, because when you try, you'll see. You'll see that it really helps. Is it, don't you feel a little bit more friendly now? Yes. Yeah, you see, you would like to come listen to my presentation. Yeah. Right? <laughs> okay, everybody try. Try. Greeting, name, and presentation. Remember your companies. Just say, oh, I'm going to give a presentation on wind resorts. I'm going to give a presentation. Okay, everybody try. got the idea. It's not hard. It's not hard. But you know, when you go to make the presentation, it really, really, really helps. Because if you can just get one or two people, just one or two people to come to your presentation and they feel comfortable, it makes everyone feel more comfortable. And even you talk to someone beforehand, later in your presentation, they're more likely to ask a question. And asking a question, you'll see later, is very helpful because it makes everyone feel relaxed. So, it seems silly, but it's actually a very helpful thing. Let me introduce myself. Here's my business card. This is my company. That's my company there. So again, introduction or what we call salutation. My, here I am, here's my name, here's my company, here's my title, okay? Very normal. Here's another way you can, you can introduce yourself. I don't think we've been introduced yet. So this is useful if you want to meet someone, but it's not just one person. Maybe it's two or three people talking. You can walk in and say, I don't think we've been introduced yet. What do you do? Right? Not how do you do it, what do you do, meaning what's your job? Because it's like presentations are usually professional, right? And where are you currently working, right? So you can ask, what do you do, meaning what's your career? Like, oh, I'm a programmer, uh, I'm a producer, uh, I'm a researcher. Where are you currently working, meaning what company are you at now, or what country are you working in now, right? Okay, they seem easy, but they're very important. Here's a, here's a good one. I'm sorry, I don't remember your name, <laughs> right? Because it's always easy to forget people's name. You get introduced and you can't remember, right? Especially with you know international conferences or meetings, it's hard to remember. So this is very normal in English. You can say, I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. Maybe we met last night at dinner or I saw we met each other. So, I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. What? Yes. What's going on? And, 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 <laughs> Anne or something, right? <laughs> could, you, could you tell me your name again? Okay, my name's Amber. Oh, okay, okay. Name Amber. Amber. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I already have your name card. I, I lost it already. Okay. Take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is very normal and this is a good way to do it. Now, some people have different kinds of tricks they use. So some people will do something like, um, oh yeah, you were, <laughs> right? And then, Hopefully they'll say something, right? Um, oh, right, I remember your... Amber. I am very... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. Right. Right. Okay, so there are many strategies to use, right? And people really don't mind. And this helps you to feel more friendly. 
And when people feel friendly, they'll come to your presentation, and in your presentation, they'll be helpful. They'll be relaxed, and that's very, very good. Okay, let's talk a little bit about knowing your audience, right? You need to know your audience. And this is important for a research paper, and it's important for a presentation. People understand things that they already understand. People are not good at understanding new things. So they like to understand the familiar. What do they already know? So in our presentation, it's important for us to help them understand our topic by understanding what they already know, right? So before you go to the presentation, the number one question is, who is the audience? Who is my audience? So in our presentation, I'm going to tell you who the audience is. For example, one of your presentations is to present about the company's stock, and the audience are investors, potential investors. So they're interested in things about stock, about assets, about liabilities, about investment opportunities, right? So you need to know who is your audience. Okay, let's look at the next one. Ask some questions that will help guide your presentation. Who are they? What do they do? What are their jobs? How much do they already know? These kinds of things. Here are some more questions you can ask. Are they colleagues? That means, do they work with you in the same company? Or are they guests from another company? That's a key question. Are they senior or junior? Meaning, are they above you or below you inside your company? Or, if they're outside your company, are they above you or below you? Are they experts in the subject? Do they already know the subject very well or not very well? Key question. How much do they already know about the topic? About your presentation topic, how much do they know? How much don't they know? Key question. How much time do they have? This is the one people often forget. How much time do they have, right? Okay. Here is a good little chart we're going to look at. Let me begin. I think I've got it right here. Okay, so we'll cover here. There are four types of audience. There are four types of audience. We're going to learn about the four types of audience today, then we're going to wrap up. When speaking to any of these four types, you need to change your presentation. So your presentation you present, but there are four different ways. Okay? Four basic ways. So let's look at that. How do we know which which way to use? How do we know what our audience is? We do that by asking two questions. Our audience members your seniors like your boss or are they your juniors or your equals? So, are they above me or are they below me or equal to me, right? Making a presentation to your boss means you must keep the presentation short <laughs> and you have to be ready to answer questions. So, somebody above you, time must stay short, key point, and be ready to answer questions as many as they want. The second question is, where does the audience come from? Where are they from? Are they from outside your company or inside your company? Right? For guests, people outside your company, you must spend time to introduce yourself, introduce who you are, introduce your company, right? Explain what is this presentation for? How will this help them? If it's people inside your company, they already know you, right? So we end up with this uh, quadrants, four quadrants of presentation topics. So the four quadrants ask number one question, are they from your company or outside your company? And then the next question, are they above you or below equal to you? Right? So these are the four types of presentations we would be giving. Let's look at some of the differences here in these presentation types. So for example, if someone is above you and inside your company, 
So my boss. You have to tell your name and position. I am Clive Warden and my position is something something, professor or something. You need to give the subject title of the presentation. Today's presentation is and you need to tell how long it is. This presentation will take five minutes. And then you say the main parts. My presentation has three main parts. The history, the current status, and the future prediction. So this is what you do if the person is above you and from inside your company. Right? If someone's from outside your company and above you, so this would be not your boss, but from another division or another company and they don't work with you but they're above you in rank. You tell who you are, what's your position, you give your subject title, the topic title. Why are you giving the presentation? You see, you don't tell that over here because your boss already knows why. You say, what's the point? Why am I doing this? What's the main goal? How long will it be? What are the parts? You also tell today I'm going to use the today I'm going to show my presentation on this screen, on this television screen. I also am giving you handouts, so you tell what are you doing. And you make a reference to the audience. So you say, well, today we have two vice presidents from Sony Company visiting us. You see? So this is how you do that one. It's similar but not the same. Some key points that are different. So this and this, and then down here, is different again. So this would be junior or equal to you, underneath, under you or equal to you, and they're from the same company. So how do you do that? You give the presentation title and subject. Why am I giving this presentation? You tell the parts of the presentation. Today we have three parts. You tell how are you going to show it. I'm going to use the projector. I'm going to use the screen. I'm going to use the internet. You tell when is the question time. So this is something like today I'm going to give you a presentation about uh, regression analysis for consumer behavior. And this is to help you understand how to analyze consumer data. And I have three parts to my presentation. One part is collecting data, one part is analyzing data, and one part is predicting behavior. And today I'm going to use the television screen. And we do have question time after I'm finished. You see? And then today we have 25 people from the accounting department and 10 people from the finance department. And welcome to you today. You see? So when is the question time? It could be something like, feel free to an ask question anytime. That's OK, too. But you need to tell. But when it's your boss, you don't tell them when it's question time. <laughs> right? They ask question whenever they want to. Right? OK, so now let's look at the guest over here. So again, similar, but a little bit different. right? What is your name and position? What is your subject title for your presentation? What is the purpose? Why is this useful? Right? Why am I doing this? How long will it last? Right? How long? This will be 10 minutes. This will be 5 minutes. Here we don't tell them how long it will last because they must, you know, they are junior to me. So how long it lasts is when I'm finished. <laughs> is finished right? right? They cannot say how long, right? But here they're your guests. You want to tell them how long because they're thinking how long do I have to wait? So you need to tell them. The main parts of the presentation, how will you show the presentation, the visual aids, tell them when is the question time coming, and say something about the audience. So you see, similar, but not exactly the same, and very important to remember these key points, right? Okay? So, when you prepare for a presentation, there's two questions to ask before you begin anything, right? And that is, are they guests or colleagues? Are they senior or junior? And these four quadrants then help you understand who is my audience. Then you can ask more questions like, how much do they know? How much do they already understand? How interested are they? You know, this kind of thing. Okay, any question here? If there's yes. both senior, junior, and equal, how 
in the same situation. Well, then it's really complicated, right? It's not, it's not very normal for that. Mm -hmm. That's kind of unusual. For example, if we go to the conference, there's mm -hmm. also the professor. Well, if you went to the conference, mm -hmm. everyone would be your oh, senior, <laughs> <laughs> right? You may have other people there that are other students, yes. but actually you're presenting to the senior people, right? Right? If I went to the conference, probably almost everyone is my equal, mm -hmm. right? Um, if I go to a meeting in the school, right, and I'm going to give a presentation, and maybe in the meeting is like the director, the Jiren, and maybe the Xiaozhen, and then maybe other professors, mm -hmm. that is like what you're saying, mixed together, mm -hmm. but I would treat it as my senior colleague, right? Mm -hmm. Because if the if the if your boss wants to ask a question, you cannot say no, no, wait. <laughs> Presentation is not over yet. <laughs> so you kind of go for whatever is higher and more formal, right? Okay. Okay. So that kind of raises the question: When you give your presentation, how formal should your presentation be? Formal or informal? And my answer is: More formal is better because no one will ever complain your presentation is too formal, right? You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if you dress well and you look good and you treat everyone like you're a senior, no one will complain that you have no manners or that it doesn't make any sense or something, right? Mm -hmm. But if you try to be relaxed and informal, then maybe someone will be offended and not like that. It's very normal, right? Okay, so Basically, what I wanted to cover today was beginning to understand how to get ready for your presentation. Now, first you understand the audience, who they are, how much do they know. Then you need to think about my topic, right? My topic. Then you begin to think, how do I make my topic? And for your topic, the most important thing is, what is your main point? And I think we've talked about this a little bit in class. We've talked about, didn't we talk about the <coughs> elevator pitch? Didn't we talk about that before, a few weeks ago? What is the elevator pitch? Everybody knows what an elevator is, right? Elevator, right? So you get in the elevator, right? Eric, I think, remembers something. We talked, Eric was awake. Eric was not sleeping. Today <laughs> <laughs> you talk about, you have to use the few time to talk about right. the point, the main point to your boss. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, elevator is, you get an elevator, right? Sometimes you push the button, you get an elevator, mm -hmm. and it goes up, and you only have 20 seconds, 30 Stop. seconds, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And pitch, P-I-T-C-H, means sell something. A pitch means a sales pitch. A sales pitch means you try to sell something. P-I-T-C-H, pitch. So a sales pitch means I try to sell something. So in the elevator, I need to sell something. You only have 30 seconds, right? So that's called the, the elevator pitch, right? So the key idea is tell me your main point quickly just tell me and then if it sounds good oh now that's interesting tell me more mm -hmm. but if you cannot if I'm not interested then don't tell me anymore <laughs> right but if I if I'm in the elevator and you begin talking blah 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 and I said no no I, I need to go right then it, 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 you not finish fast enough so a main point is like the elevator pitch can you tell me very quickly very short like one <laughs> sentence what is the main point Right? Now, this is not easy to do. This is very, very hard to do. And it means you need to understand your topic very, very well. And you need to understand the audience. What do they care about? Right? So, if you tell them the main point is how regression analysis helps us understand consumer behavior, this sounds very long and not clear and not helpful for me. But if I say, 
my main point today is to help you sell more products. And they go, oh, okay, how? <laughs> right? You see? Right? Or to, my main point is for you to better understand your consumers so your consumers are more satisfied. Oh, yeah, I see. Okay, how? <laughs> right? You see? So the main point. Right? Now, this is also a little bit of a cultural thing. Because if we look at Chinese culture and Japanese culture in speeches, they usually don't make the main point first. Mm -hmm. Right? You have to wait a long time <laughs> to get the main point. But in Western culture, the main point comes first. So in our class, we're emphasizing this Western perspective. So we put the main point first. So the idea is get the main point. Now some people say, why would you put the main point first? Then people won't listen. But no, they will because they're asking, how? Tell me more. You see? So you want to get their attention. They, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Tell me, tell me more. How does that work? How did you do that? How do I succeed? How do I do that? Once you have an idea of your topic and your audience, now you can begin to think of the main point. Because your main point could be different for different audience. Even though your subject is the same, for different audience, your main point could be different. Right? The main point can be summed up in a single sentence. It's easy to say. It's easy to listen to. Elevator pitch. Elevator pitch. That's the way I like to think of it. The main point gets attention from the beginning of the presentation and should be easy for you to speak clearly. So you need to practice it. What is your main point? And it's, it's, it sounds easy to do, but it's not easy to do. Think about research papers you read. For your classes, you read these research paper. Can you tell me for the research paper what the main point is? Sometimes even you read the abstract. The abstract should tell you the main point. You read the abstract and you go, huh? <laughs> right? You still don't get the main point. And some some authors are good, but most it's very hard. It's very hard to take those ideas and make the main point. One reason it's hard is because your subject you are an expert. You know everything. You should know everything. If you don't know everything, something's wrong. You should know everything. So for you to take your big idea and make one sentence, it's not natural because your idea is so complicated. You understand everything. So we often say the more you understand, the harder it is to make it simple because you know everything about it, right? But you need to make it simple. So you need to spend time on it. When I, when I write research papers with other researchers, we always are trying to think, what's the main point, what's the main point, what's the main point? And it's hard. And we're always telling each other, no, no, you're thinking too much. Stop, stop, stop. Just focus on the main point. Because it's easy to get off of that. Okay, so I just remind you, it looks easy, but it's not easy. Get your main point to the audience in the first 30 seconds. So 30 seconds, you get your main point. Now, the main point, the main point may not be like, like for example, a product. Maybe I want, maybe today I'm going to give a presentation about this product. And of course, my main point is this product. But is my main point really this product? Right? Don't we learn in marketing that it's not really the product that's the main reason people buy things? Right? Why do people buy things? There are many reasons why, right? I think they must buy things to feel good. If they buy things, they'll feel good. Mm -hmm. Right? So, if I'm going to talk about this product, am I really going to talk, is my main point really this product? No, the, the main point may be, what do you get when you use this product? Right? So if today I'm talking about this air conditioner remote control, if I tell you my main point today is to show you how good an air conditioner remote control is, nobody cares. <laughs> but if I tell you today my main point is to show you how you can stay cool and not be troubled at all. Mm -hmm. you say, oh, well, how do I do that? You say, well, I've got 
a remote control. <laughs> <laughs> you see? So I'm selling the remote control, but that's not my main point. You see what I mean? So the main point is for that audience to understand what do they think is useful, helpful, makes them happy, makes them feel good. And then use that to say, that's the point. Now let me explain how. Right? So it's a marketing thing. That's what we study in marketing all the time. So get your main point out in the first 30 seconds. Clear main point examples. Here are some examples we can look at. New orders will raise profits in the coming year. So I'm telling my colleagues. New orders raise profits. Very clear. This is my topic today. This is my first sentence. Everything after this sentence, all my presentation after this, is explaining this. New orders will raise profits in the coming year. Right? That really says everything. Actually, I could just stop my presentation now and it'd be over. The problem is you want to understand the detail. Right? How, where, what, 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 how does it work? So a good main point right there. Research results show students who read at least two English books a semester improve grammar skills faster than students who read no English books. So it's like a research topic, right? So my research, I did a lot of research, I have statistics, I have survey, and what does it show? Here, this is it. This is my whole research, one sentence. It's a little bit long, it's a little bit long, but it makes it all very clear. My research today, I want to tell you, right now, tell you, students who read two books, their English gets better than students who read no books. And that's, that's it. We could stop right now. Stop. Everything's done. That's the main point. But now people say, oh, okay, how do you know that? How did you show that? What's the evidence? How did you do that? What's the statistics? You see, it's all the detail, right? Okay, I can show you the detail next. Here's another example. Competition will increase, but new products and services will help our company improve results and raise stock value. So for today, I want to show you in my company that in the future we're going to have more competition, but we're going to increase value. Now let me show you how. Okay. So the main point is not the detail, the main point is the overall. Here's another example. Procter & Gamble products are important in many parts of consumers' lives, from beauty products to snack food. So today I want to tell you about the products that are important to the consumer. Right? That's my main point. So if there's one thing you remember today, remember this. That's what I want you to remember. Okay? Make sense? Think of a presentation, as I said earlier, as being kind of a, a map, right? You have a beginning of a presentation, and then you move through to the end of the presentation. And in that presentation, you're trying to show people how to get from point A to point B. A presentation must clearly support and expand the main point. So my main point is very easy to understand. Now I need to support, expand that. The system is easy to follow. You need a system. What kind of system? One that's easy to follow. That makes a good presentation. So I begin with my main point. Now I want to tell you more. We could stop right at main point would be enough. You could just leave. If you believe me, then everything's okay. But I want to show you more. So I need, I need some kind of system. How? How do I show you more? Well, you need to have a system. What kind of system? You need to have a system that people follow. It's like a road map. It's like a map. I need to show you how to get from maybe from home to school. How do you do that? Right? That's what a presentation is like. You need to show the audience. How do you get from your main point all the way down to the end? Right? While still planning your presentation, you need to design this system. So before you make your presentation, you need to think, what is my main point? What does the audience care about? Make a main point. Now I need a system. How do I make the system? It's totally up to you. You can do anything you want. 
There are many, many ways to do that. Not one way. There is not one right way. So I will not teach you how to make that. That's up to you. Right? I can teach you some ways to make the things you do good, but how do you do it? It's totally up to, do, to you. Some of our groups have three people. For those three people, do you have one person present or three people present? Do you have two people present and then one person change? I, I don't know. That's your, whatever your system is. You need to come up with a system, right? If you're one person presenting, how are you gonna do it? What's your system? So you need to make your system and it's totally up to you. A system is hard to create after a presentation is already complete. See, so that's a key point. You need to have your system ready beforehand. You need to have this map ready before your presentation, before you make your presentation. A key idea to remember is that a presentation is not a list of facts. Now this is the number one problem people make. Number one, right here. If you've been to a conference, you, you know this, right? People go, they make a presentation, and they say, uh, number one, blah, 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 number two, blah, 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 number three, blah, blah, blah. That is not a presentation. That's just a list, right? So a presentation is not a list. It is not just repeating information. It is not just showing some slides. That's not a presentation. That's just a list, <laughs> right? A good presentation not only includes those things like a system and a list, but it also brings together something else, something more, right? What is that more? It's some kind of clear statement, some idea, and that idea helps your audience say, ah, this is interesting. So you have your main point, you have some kind of system, and then what happens? The audience says, oh, yeah, okay, that's interesting. What does the audience remember? They probably only remember the main point. <laughs> but that's okay. Now, if you just give the main point and you say, okay, that's it, I'm done, main point, that's all, then nobody will believe you, right? So they'll list, they'll say, oh, main point, okay, tell me more. And then you tell them more. But then if you go, okay, one, blah, 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 two, blah, 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 and then they go, oh, blah, blah, blah. And then, then they forget your main point. You see? So, I cannot tell you what to do because you can be creative. You can do whatever you want. There are many ways to make a system, but the main goal of a system is to help people to remember your main point. Okay? Therefore, you need to begin thinking about your system early. You don't wait until like just before your presentation to make a system. You need to think of it very, very early. What, how am I going to do this? And especially for you guys that have three people on your team. This is really not an easy thing to do. How are you going to do it? How are you going to execute it? Right? Okay, I think we're going to uh, hold up on our slides here. Okay. And I'm going to jump over to here. So before we end up for today, are there any questions? Now, this week I got really busy. I need to go back right after class and grade your homework. <laughs> and then I'm going to assign another homework. But I'm not sure which section yet. So I'm going to go back to my office, I'll think, and then I'll send you an email. Okay? We're going to keep writing. Every week, still writing. <laughs> right? Professor, Every week, just, writing. I just want to get my homework. It feels like, it feels like I, read, I read the homework and uh, uh -huh. on Saturday and it says so you did not know it was due today yeah. can I open it and then you do it tonight yeah. maybe yeah. is it possible did anybody else miss them with it's kind of my fault actually it's kind of my fault yeah. <laughs> did anybody else miss the homework I'm gonna open the date one more day can you do it tonight okay. and I'll grade it uh, tomorrow Saturday and I'll send you an email it's important for us to keep writing why? Because <laughs> didn't you just say students who write every week <laughs> improve more than students who don't write every week? <laughs> That's my main point. <laughs> right? The one thing I want you to remember today is my main point about that. Okay? So we're gonna keep writing, okay? And then 
For this week, then, I want you to begin thinking about your first presentation. It's not next week. It's probably next, next week. So we have a little bit of a delay so we can get ready. So what you need to do now is you need to begin. Get information about your company. Get information about your company. That means get the annual report. Annual report is the key piece of information. And usually the com every company that's publicly traded will have an annual report. And then they also may have quarterly reports. Quarterly is every three months. Right? So annual report and quarterly report. So get that. You may want to get last year's annual report or the year before too if you want more information. Okay? Found? Annual report found? <laughs> okay, so what you're going to need to do is start reading the annual report. And then start to prepare for the information, right? Focus on something. Oh, so next week is no class. No class. Yeah. Business. Uh, Business. Next week. Next week. Next week. Next week. That may be good because usually when we when we make the presentations, this is what we do. Uh, usually when we make the presentations, I will give you a time to come for your group. Oh. Otherwise, it's kind of silly. Everybody sit there waiting for the presentation. <laughs> so we just do the presentation one group at a time. Mm -hmm. And the presentations are no more than five minutes long. No more than five minutes. So. You may think, oh good, no more than five minutes is good, but actually making a presentation in five minutes is actually very hard. It's much easier to make a long presentation than a short presentation. It's very difficult. So what we'll do is that week we won't have class, but we will find time to do the presentation. So maybe during the week, maybe like Thursday or Wednesday or something, you can come in. I'll give you a schedule. You can come in, just just your group by yourself. You stand in front of the green screen and give your presentation. Okay? So not a problem. And then we won't have our regular class. But I may record me and put it on the <laughs> just, to just and then you can watch the lecture to save time. Okay? All right. teacher, do you join us to go to the business? I think that might be hard. I've got a few things to do. Uh, we're looking at introduction number two, which was due two days ago. Introduction number two. Nope, so it's the wrong direction. Come back here. Introduction number two. Modify. possible get it done tonight. I'll make it close at 19, which would be tonight. Tonight. Okay. Midnight. Okay, thanks. Okay, any other questions? Uh, when we need to make our presentations, I'll make a schedule for us. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah. So because it's because we want to cover a lot of, I'm still thinking how we'll execute 
we may, it may be possible that we actually have some of our lectures just ready for you to watch whenever you want to. Like today, I'm just sitting here talking. <laughs> There's no reason you have to be right here, mm -hmm. right? And then we get together sometimes, but not every time if we don't need to. But I told you before, I've been doing this a long time, and we usually used to do interactive online class. The problem was, when we have class, I would be online, and my graduate students would be online, but I'm in my room, and they're in the research room, mm -hmm. so it didn't make any sense. We're right next to each other anyway, you see? So what I'm thinking is, rather than simultaneous, what's called synchronous, I just have the video, and you can watch when you want to watch. But we do have to have some way to make sure you watch. Mm -hmm. That would mean every week we have a little quiz mm -hmm. or some exercise. Okay? So that's, that's probably what we'll do a little bit. But first, next week we'll have class here just like regular, okay? All right, now let me see. There's one more thing I want to show you. You need to look at this one here. Okay, yes, here we go. Okay, we have an exercise in the book. You do have to get the book. So talk to Yating about the book. And I want you this week to do the first exercise in the book. Now, the exercise is not hard. None of these exercises are hard. That's not the point. The point is not to be hard. The point is to practice it so you know to feel comfortable doing it. And the exercise I want you to do this week is to make an outline. Now, we've talked about outlines in our class when we talked about Microsoft Word, right? So what I want you to do is, I want you to, number one, go through here and complete these outlines. The outline means what are the main steps and what are the sub-steps. So step number one, A, B, C. Step number two, A, B, C. Step number three, A, B, C. What do you have to do? So for example, in the first one, I want you to complete this outline. Complete an outline explaining the steps for children to buy and consume ice cream. Right? And you're all, we're all consumer students of consumer behavior, so think about it from a consumer behavior perspective. What are the steps to doing that? So for example, I begin by helping you here. How about the part for choosing flavors? How about the part for paying money? How about the part for eating it? I want you to complete those. Right? And then in class, you're going to show me what you did. And we're going to talk about it. Okay? It's not a hard exercise. It's not the point. The point is not to be hard. The point is to do it, and then we discuss it. Are we going to write it or just draw it? No, I want you to write it in your book, but you don't need to give it to me. Right? In class, we'll talk about it. So I'll call on some students and say, let me see, what did you do? And you, we'll talk about it. So it's basically for your own notes. Okay? You're not going to turn it in. The next exercise will be next, next week. It's a little bit... More open. It's a very simple beginning. So do the first exercise, which is an outline practice. Okay? Uh, it's in the textbook. So talk to Yating about getting a textbook. Okay. We have some in my office right there. You can just get quick. Okay? All right. Any other questions? So next week, then no problem, right? Next week we meet no here. Problem. Then after next week, we're going to begin our first presentation. And I'll give you the topic next week. Probably the first topic is related to introducing your company's market or something like this. Consumer market. Mar market. market. Not annual report. No, it, the information comes from the annual report. You're not going to introduce the annual report. No, it's too huge. Each, each presentation will focus on one subject. For example, a new product or uh, stock, stock offering. Tell me why I should buy your stock. Or, um, in this case, maybe for the first presentation, you would focus on one of your main markets. So just focus on one market. Some companies have more than one market with different products. So market segmentation kind of thing, right? Tell me about your market, okay? I will tell you who the audience is, and then you need to make up your presentation. Okay, so this week, spend your time, do this exercise, I'm going to give you a new writing assignment and get your annual reports and begin to understand the detail of your company. Okay?
All right then, that's it. Oh, yeah, I'm <laughs> 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 <laughs>